The IBM Forms Designer has schema-driven drag-and-drop capabilities that create the proper user interface elements according to various data types in the schema, as well as groups of controls for element subtrees. Although the data element names are used by default to create these label prompts, the Forms Designer actually allows you to annotate the XML schema with XForms labels that control these various prompts. The schema-driven design capabilities also extend to being able to create tables for repeating structures. For example, this health details portion of the medical pre-approval contains two subtrees. The second one is for a set of recommended medical procedures that need to be approved. For example, with a dental operation like bridge work, there's the bridge itself, there's the teeth that have to get pulled, there's the x-rays, the anesthetic, and so forth. All these things that the form user has to add dynamically at the runtime of the form and that have to get totaled up as a total amount for the set of procedures that need to be done. When the designer reads the schema and it finds, the technical term is max occurs, something like unbounded or anything greater than one, it actually knows to bring up the table wizard or the table editor as part of the drag and drop design experience. So I'm going to drag and drop these health details here and it's going to create all the user interface for all of these pieces, the atomic pieces, this group of controls, and then it hits the recommended procedures and it starts reading the schema definition. It actually reads inside of the thing that's occurring multiple times to find out what the column names are actually supposed to be and will generate that for you automatically. Then allows you to go on to making other table settings uh, such as uh, highlighting the focused row and then you hit finish and it will generate the table for you along with all of the other user interface elements. So as you can see here, it created a Boolean value for a checkbox for a Boolean value. And if I scroll down a little bit more, and I can double click this because we're in Eclipse. So you can see a little better. It's created the uh, four column table in this case. It's also created uh, the buttons and the code for the buttons that allow you to automatically uh, grow and shrink this table with however many rows are needed at runtime. Uh, pretty much the only thing you need to do here is to tell this automatically generated total to stay uh, aligned relatively below this table uh, during runtime so that as it expands, um, the total will automatically go down with it. The designer is also equipped to do a lot of other table operations uh, automatically for you. So uh, you can think about uh, the you know purchase order style of uh, form where you have you know quantity times price type of operation so uh, which is also needed here so if you right click here I can go to the row operation wizard and it allows me to uh, define automatically using the GUI click and uh, you know point and click type of metaphor I can pick where the results gonna go and then I can actually pick you know by pointing and clicking the quantity multiplied by the price in this case and it will automatically set up this formula for however many rows of this table to get added or deleted at runtime. All I do is I click finish. And what's happened is I've clicked I've chosen the user interface elements here and it has used the user interface bindings to that underlying data layer to set up the formula at the data model level. The other operation you can think of for like you know expense reports or here once again in the medical pre-approval I need to know what the total is so I can go to the column summation wizard right? and that allows me to choose first what column do I want to sum. Okay. Now if you've generated this table using the left hand table palette uh, you would hit finish at this point because it will automatically generate a total object for you but in my case uh, we're doing schema driven design so I'm going to go to the second phase where I get to choose the piece of data that I'm interested in. Okay. Now in my case uh, I actually want to choose uh, a piece of data and I could go through the, the, the trees in order to do that but instead uh, I just want to go and actually select the data element from the form and it will automatically look at what the user interface binding is for that and generate the X path for me so I don't have to do any coding 
uh, to get a completely running form. So now here I'm still in the main design canvas. Uh, below the design canvas there's a set of tabs that allow you to have, for example, the runtime view of this form. So I'm going to flip over to the runtime view of the form and show you that it's running. I'll skip past the uh, wizard view, which we haven't set up yet. That's another video. And I'll go to the main page and you can see all of the user interface elements are there, including, you know, I can you know, click here and say oh, I was born yesterday, for example. I can, you know, pick what state I'm in. I get the type ahead behavior as I do that. So I'm from Tennessee in this case, maybe. Uh, and I get the uh, the table here with the automatic, you know, growing however many rows are needed. Total scooting down as we go. And as I type four here and five here, um, you know, I get the row operation happening and the column summation is happening. I type six and seven, I get the additional $42 and it's all adding up and put 7 and 8 here. You can see that uh, I'm getting the totals all the way and the formulas that are being set up know to automatically ignore uh, empty rows until they get filled out and of course if I uh, delete here then uh, not only does it delete the piece of data which is what this code does but the system automatically knows to delete the user interface elements and to update all of the uh, formulas that are at play at the same time. So that's a fairly complete capability to do XML driven design and to be responsive to all of the, the main needs for dynamically growing and shrinking tables that have mathematical operations performed over them. This completes the demonstration of the capabilities of the XML schema driven design and if you'd like to learn more about IBM Forms 4.0 come to our website where you can get more in-depth information case studies, and free trial downloads. Thanks for watching.